Hi, I'm Deborah Prinzing. Happy, happy new year. And uh, oh my gosh, what a crazy week we've had. I think we need some floral wellness and uh, some Ikebana to distract us. Um, not, it, I don't want to be distracted. We have to be mindful of, of all the craziness going on, but I do love the fact that we can center ourselves with today's topic. Um, so it's 2021. And one of the first things that I do every year or have for seven years is put a uh, forecast report out for slow flowers, the slow flowers, in, uh, floral insights and industry forecast. I have an aversion to the word trend, so I try not to use it, but uh, that's just goes back to my days as a business reporter. We always did a forecast uh, in January, which I kind of hated, but this is fun. So ironically, uh, I want to <clears throat> put a link to the report in the, in the chat. Um, so, oh, so everybody can see it. And Karen's putting a note in, oh, that's, she's putting a, a recap from last month in the, in the chat. So that's good. Um, anyway, I wanted to just show you the title page and sort of set the stage for today uh, for this uh, theme of floral wellness. And um, I was really inspired by this after many, many conversations with others um, over the course of the year, just to kind of see what, what are we all yearning for? And during, after a year of COVID, <clears throat> certainly we know that consumers everywhere want to connect with flowers more and want to connect with nature. And uh, we've kind of dabbled in these forecast be uh, t topics before. In the past, I had, um, I, I identified aromatherapy as a, a, an, a topic of interest in 2018. And then in 2019, I identified year of the house plant. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I just decided to come up with a little definition for what I'm calling floral wellness. And it's an embrace of the therapeutic importance of flowers, both in our own environments and as a meaningful way to share with others. Floral wellness nurtures a positive and habitual desire to have flowers in our lives. And as an expression of our desire for others to also experience flowers, emotional, physical, mental, and psychic value. And I believe that this is happening to all of us. We're all seeing this kind of play out in our own floral enterprises um, <clears throat> from the rise of, you know, safe COVID uh, structured uh, in-person workshops or virtual workshops uh, to the explosion of CSA subscriptions as, you know, consumers just want more flowers. So my wish is that you know, we continue this in 2021 and that we um, can enhance our offerings and our, um, you know, kind of our purpose for, yes, making flowers pretty, but also, um, you know, bring, and bringing beauty to people's lives, but also bring mindfulness and intentionality. And um, I really think that today's topic, uh, Ikebana with Rachel Johnson is going to center us on that. So I'd love to introduce Rachel. Before I do, I'm just going to say, please, um, if you have want to, uh, it looks like everybody's identified themselves by their business. Um, Nisha is going to be taking down a list of everyone who's in attendance. <clears throat> we have some giveaways that we'll, um, we'll draw after today. And um, there's some cool stuff which we've given away before, but the most exciting thing is that Rachel has agreed to donate a 30 minute one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, Zoom tutorial on Sogetsu, Sogetsu Ikebana. So somebody's gonna get that. And she's kind of ready to kill me because I put her on the spot about that. <laughs> but <laughs> let me just give you a little bit of information about Rachel and her background, and then I'll well welcome her. Um, Rachel is based in San Francisco, a studio that focuses on botanical design and Ikebana. In 20 years, Rachel's Ikebana practice has deepened from being a gardener's creative outlet to an artistic discipline to a livelihood. She has a diverse floral and botanical design practice, which ranges from weekly and special occasion commissions, seasonal installations for home and office, as well as work in public spaces and private gardens. With a former career as a practitioner and teacher of Japanese shiatsu bodywork, Rachel's study of Ikebana also led to teaching. She currently holds the teaching rank of Jonin Somu, and I apologize if I'm saying that wrong, uh, from the Sogetsu School of Ikebana headquartered in Tokyo. And in 2020, she completed a professional teaching credential through UC Berkeley Extension. For the past 10 years, she has taught community and wellness ex 
experiential classes, as well as a long-term ongoing class for dedicated students in San Rafael, California. And in 2020, that class moved to Zoom. So of course, we are um, all here on Zoom today. And um, I'm going to stop talking and welcome Rachel and uh, ask her to introduce herself and her, her entire studio practice and philosophy. And if you have questions, uh, we're, we'll please chat them, uh, uh, jot them down in the chat box and I will um, intersperse Rachel's presentation with some questions. So uh, Rachel, welcome. Thank you. Good you, are, you are a regular attendee of the, of this, these meetups. So a lot of people will recognize you from being on the, on the gallery. <laughs> but yeah. I, I'm glad you're going to share your, your beautiful work with us today. I'm delighted and, and honored and honestly, you and all this community have been a really bright place to be during the hardship that we've gone through and on every level. Right. Um, so for me, flowers, um, it's been a part of, from the beginning of, of making a space into a space that is um, welcoming and safe and grounded and um, my uh, in my in my massage practice my accountant one year gave me permission to buy flowers every week to put them in my studio and it, like from that point on I was like oh these are essential workers <laughs> they, they they have to be there because they nurture me I'm nurturing other people and it's it goes around and around so it, it's really grown from that and Simply Grounded, that name came from my massage practice because it was on a futon Japanese on the floor. So it literally was <laughs> on the ground. How perfect. <laughs> and yeah, as I've made this transition into um, Ikebana design and teaching, the name, the name stays because it's a, it's a big enough idea that I can do all these diverse things. And that's the core sort of value of it, that it's you know, I, I'm not there yet. I never will be simply <laughs> simple enough. But, you know, the core is to to be grounded, to just do what feels like that, whatever mm -hmm. that is. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, you're going to talk a little bit about what you're doing in your studio now in uh, with. Well, first of all, maybe tell us what is am I saying it right? So get so get so get so get to get to means moon. OK, so so get to actually means grass moon or like the, a new moon cycle mm -hmm. um, the, or the spring moon, <clears throat> various things, yeah. Okay, so okay. What, what is, define that in the world of Ikebana and why you were drawn to it. Um, I, well, it was luck. I think you're drawn to the thing that, re, that is going to be resonant for you. Um, and so Getsu School is only 90 years old. Some of the schools are 500 years old. So some of them are, are, are so carrying the tradition of the ancient tradition. And it's got many factors in it. It's got some very formal, um, it's got some courtliness, some aristocracy, some humbleness, some tea ceremony. It's got the whole you know, spectrum there. And so Getsu School was founded um, in the 1920s in rebellion because Japanese things, you know, they hold tradition, but at the same time, they want to renew. So this, um, he, from, from an Ikebana family, um, Sofu Teshigahara founded Sogetsu School to be more modern and more international and mm. more accessible, and that people could make Ikebana anywhere with any material at any time instead of the real rigidness of we have to do this leaf and this flower because it's this day on this month. So we, we don't have to, we, we learn about tradition, but really our goal is to be more sculptural and work with local materials, our environment, and to express ourselves. So you're putting your, your, you sort of discover yourself through what, your, what comes out. That's so interesting. It's almost like it becomes uh, accessible to everyone then, uh, as opposed to just this very elite uh, group of, of artists. Is that fair to say? I think so. It's on its way, let's say. It was like 400 years men only. <laughs> wow. 100 years women have, have, have got into the space. And, <laughs> and, and now, you know, what I see in my community is that we're older, uh, and I, I really am interested in a, a little bit more working with a younger generation 
um, because and our current headmistress, we've got a headmistress now in Japan, she used to be an elementary school teacher. So she has a real feeling for education. Hmm. So that's been, um, yeah, that's been a, a good link for me. That's great. You mentioned local and what's available. So talk a little bit about your sourcing and then we'll let you get started with your design because I want everyone to see what you're doing. Yeah. Well, I have a little garden. Um, it's, it's still growing. And, I, you know, it's very hard to pick from your own garden because it's the only one. So you circle around it for ages until like <gasps> so that in right in there is like how precious it is to take a couple of flowers or a branch that's taken a year to grow. Then there's outside my garden on my walks in the park and um, a place I just told you about where I go foraging. Um, <laughs> Tell everybody else about it too. <laughs> I call it the larder because the when the city or the park service, you know, cuts trees and shrubs, they dump them all on this great long road and it's blocked off. So I have to walk in, pick, go through it and see what I can use. But branches last a really long time. So at this time of year, there's tons of pine, there's cotoneaster, there's bay leaves, there, there's a lot that I can use. And then there's some dried, um, oh yeah, th there's just lots of <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. um, you've, well, I'll just pause and say, I've seen a lot, uh, some of your pieces because for the last couple of years, I was doing this monthly collection on, um, for publication on house.com mm -hmm. kind of fell apart with COVID, but I'm hoping to revive it. But there were several times I, I would have like a particular ingredient and do a call for contributions. And I remembered most distinctly that the one that you contributed, I think it was with um, magnolia leaves and, but the way you designed magnolia leaves, it was almost like you, did you stitch them together or were they just arranged as like almost like a, a skirt around the vase. Yeah, I, I, I made a necklace. I put a wire right through so that they could be vertical and show all of their texture. Oh, that was phenomenal. Yeah. Just yeah. like talking about looking at plant material entirely differently. Yes, yeah, and, and that's another key a Cabana thing is to look at the back of the leaf, the front of the leaf, uh, to, to distort and change, to use them as art supplies. Mm -hmm in nature, but with, with respect for them, but also to really um, find out how much, you know, how much can they express? What can you do with them? Well, and like you said, it's sculptural. And so you're looking at the, the sculptural end product as um, not, I mean, I don't want to say it's not a floral arrangement, but there's a, a bigger definition in your mind when you're designing then. Um, there's often a concept in my mind. Okay. So, um, you know, it can start with the material or the season or something abstract like straight lines mm -hmm. or water or, you know, it could it could be many different and bouquets to art in San Francisco yeah. that is working as a group has really been interesting to do something bigger and then to take the jumping off point from another artist's work. So that's we can right. do sculpture because it, it, it uh, resonates with us. But. Oh, that's cool. And then she's talking about the annual event called Bouquets to Art that the De Young Muse Art Museum hosts for local florists. Uh, uh, most people come in and do an interpretation, a uh, floral interpretation of a canvas, right? Like a painting. Yeah. But you're saying you choose, you, you try to choose sculpture. We, oft, we often choose sculpture because we feel we've, we're already working with volume and mass and um, trying to um, complement or have a conversation with the art. We, we're not really trying to take the palette and make a, uh, you know, there's so many expressions in that. Right. Show. They all right. work. <laughs> yeah. Good. Well, let's get started. Show us what you're going to demo today. And um, this is... Um, Rachel said that this is her setup for when she teaches her Zoom students. So I, the audio sounded good to us when we did a test. So um, if anyone has trouble, just put a note in the chat and we'll, we'll let Rachel know. Okay. Well, good morning. Here I am in my classroom. I have to ring this bell. Let's just take a breath there. Me too. I'm so excited. And it's really an invitation to um, stay in the present. So what I want to show you first is um, um, one of the early on lessons in a cabana. This um, tall container is, you know, is quite strong here. And I'm going to show you close up. I've put a fixture inside there. There are two crossbars. 
It's, it's just um, a little piece of twig. And then I cut one end pointed and the other straight. So they're kind of just tension is holding them in place. Yeah. And I put one in one way and one coming from the bottom upwards. Oh, now I have to put water in. <laughs> and these are my materials. Yeah. Uh, Tony Asta from the city of San Francisco. Thank you very much. And I've got kale. Uh, these are from Repetto, which is a lovely nursery down in Half Moon Bay. Um, so yeah, with um, we just had Christmas holidays, and with uh, in Japan, New Year's a really big holiday, and it's got some similar colours, but. Westerners don't, I don't want to feel like I'm doing Christmas all over again, I've had enough. So I've got Cotoniasta with fewer red berries. So in that way, I feel like I'm toning down on, on that aspect. So this long branch is going to be um, at an angle like this. And I know the length of it from um, taking measurement and proportion from the vessel. So I'm going to measure the height of the vessel, but not smash it against the ground. And then the diameter and about half as much again. And I'm going to cut it there. So this is where I'd like it, how long I'd like it to be. Let's just go again. Yep. And I have to leave enough inside. And even enough length for it to go into the container like this. So I'm going to give it a cut. And I have a bowl here of water. This is called a Mizugiri bowl. And we cut everything under water to condition it. So uh, usually, as you know, when you get fresh materials from anywhere, you don't know how long they've been in what kind of water. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give that one a little split as well because that also helps to give it hydration. So I'm gonna place it into to here. That looks great. We can see it on the screen. You can see it, yeah. And it's and it's um, coming forward towards you. So it's a little distorted on um, on the screen. That's really the big challenge with teaching on Zoom. Is things are not in the they don't look the same. So this second branch is going to make an uh, an angle here, and I have to measure it from the first one. So it's going to be about three quarters of the length of that one. And it's going to be more upright, so I'm going to cut it here so that it will oh. <laughs> ring the bell. It's funny. Um, and are you okay, Rachel, if I pose questions from the um, people attending uh, while you're teaching, or would you rather wait till the end? Uh, yeah, if I, can't, if I can't answer yet, I'll, I'll say let's wait till the end. Okay, okay, great. Yeah. So these two main branches are then followed by, uh, they are the lines, the structure. And there's a third line, which we're going to use a flower. So this one's length is determined by that one. So it's about three quarters of that. So take that there, and this one's going, and I'm gonna to have to shape it a little bit. This one has to come quite low. We do a lot of bending and shaping. That's okay that it cracked because that will be where it hydrates a lot. <laughs> oh, no, I've got it too low now. I'm gonna go with a different one. So I'm going to make the stem go down at the same time as I want the, the, the stem to come out low here. And then ah, that one that I a little short can come in here. So each of these um, branches and flowers uh, it's, are protected and um, guided into the water 
by their contact with the container and with those crossbar sticks, and they all touch the edge of the container on the inside also. And does that also help support the balance of the stem in the direction that you want then? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the, the directions and the angles are, you know, they're sort of prescribed at this point. Um, this, these are a series of designs that we have diagrams for, which is, is hard to, um, to do all that, but you learn a lot by the process. So you learn to look for the material that will make that design. And you know, each season there's a different choice available. So it takes quite a long time to um, take in some of these lessons mm. and all the little details that go with it. So I'm placing a piece here that I'm, I'm always corrected on as a student that we have to have a link with the, between the container and the plant material. Huh. We can't have the mouth of the container empty there just rude <laughs> <laughs> well it's because it's because you have this in, integrated my uh image in mind that the the finished piece in, is a uh, vase and botanicals all as as a single idea right right right, right. so they have to uh, they have to relate to each other yeah actually i'm going to put another one there And uh, these secondary pieces to um, finish the mm. sides. Now, everything. I'm just going to turn it sideways so you can see that everything is leaning forward. And this is because in traditional Japanese presentation in traditional homes, um, the ikebana would be placed in a in a niche or alcove called a tokonoma. And so you only would see it from the front on. And so this means that we work a lot with um, depth forward, uh, but not a lot of depth back because you're, and we're in a little box here, but one piece goes in towards the back to create dimension. You may not see it, uh, especially in the screen like this, but um, it really helps to give us a, a sense of the material um, and that it's balanced so that it's not um, falling forward. I think another little piece out here on the on this other side. So these three main lines have names, Shin, Soe, and Hikai. Shin, Soe, Hikai. And they represent heaven, earth, and man. Mm. <laughs> We have one design where man isn't is optional. <laughs> <laughs> is there woman? <laughs> oh yeah, by that we mean woman, really. Yeah. Uh -huh. That. Oh. And then when it's done, you should lift it up and put it back down. If things fall out, they weren't put in deeply enough, and if they fall in, they're they're sort of locking. So they're locking into each other. That's fascinating. I love it. Yeah. So what's lovely about the Cotoniasto is the back of the leaf here has got this lovely celadon cover, color of the container. Okay. So I'm going to put that one aside and move on to a really different little piece. So uh, Rachel, when you're teaching on Zoom with your students, do you make them do that little like shake, shake and, uh, and bounce test? Uh, on a good day, you can sort of tell if it will take it. But in the classroom, yeah. But again, like, if, if it will, sometimes it's so precarious. It's like the art of flower balancing. <laughs> it's only don't breathe anybody. Yeah. So this little piece I want to make now um, is this is a piece of kiwi vine, which is a wonderful material because it lasts forever. And I fixed it onto a little kenzan, um, pin frog. Pin frog. Mm -hmm. Kenzan means needle mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Needle Mountain? Needle Mountain, isn't that great? So it really is uh, useful to use in a bowl like this where, um, you know, it's, it's open. And I'm going to, um, again, use lime, mass, and color. They're the three elements we usually are working with. And where did I put you? Here. I've got this beautiful bunch of daffodils. This, to me, is early early spring sign in England. 
And so I'm going to place it. I've just got a little bit of a rubber band there. And I've got a tiny piece of wire that's beautiful wire. It's very thin and it's covered with paper and it's green. So I'm going to just place that at the very top. Uh, we don't usually want to fan out things to make a going outwards. You usually want to keep them um, in this design particularly quite contained because mm. of the impact of the kiwi vine. Rachel, you just said something about the daffodils reminded you of spring in England. I, I, are you British? I can't remember what, what, what your uh, accent is from. Yes, I, I'm English and I've been here since 83. <clears throat> well, you've kept your lovely accent. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, it's an accent, yes, we're all American now. <laughs> but but your, your point of reference in the garden must go back to growing up in England. It does, but I never had a garden in England. So it wasn't until okay. I was in the 30s that I had my first garden here in a rental. And then oh, you okay. It's like, like, what could I do? Yeah. So this um, little bunch I'm going to place here very upright and strong for the new year, mm. optimistic for the color. And then I've got another little piece of kiwi that I saved. And I think that's gonna go uh, back there. Let's bring that up closer so that you can see better. Oh. This is a really peaceful sort of contemplation piece that you don't need many flowers um, when you have beautiful lines that lead you to something peaceful, you don't need a whole lot of material. So that's another beautiful aspect of a cabana. The, but, yeah. A quick question. You said that it was line, color, and mass. Were those the three features that, or, that you yes. were looking at? Yes. And somebody asked about the wire. Is it bind wire, the paper covered wire that you used? No, it's it's special wire from Japan. <laughs> my, my supply is dwindling. And um, <clears throat> yeah, next time it, we've not received anything from Japan for a long time. So um, yeah, so I, I take, take care of it. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. So if somebody has a question about that, can they contact you about the name of it? Uh, I don't think I can read the name of it because oh. it's in Japanese. Oh, but I see. But they can contact me anyway and I'll try and find out. Okay. So you have a way to order it. I do. I order through my Akabana teacher. Ah, okay. It's here. Yeah. It's very um, special then. Yeah. I'm going to put that one over here actually because uh, I've got space. I just wanted to show you one more thing. Um, oh, apart from I wanted to point out that on the wall here, I've got a really traditional New Year piece. I don't know if you can see it very yes. well. Yes, we can. Paper strings, which are devilishly hard to use. <laughs> and this is a big piece of um, long needle pine from the larder. And in here, I've got a kumquat and a couple of cassia flowers. Anyway, this lovely um, bamboo vessel was made by a friend in a workshop. So we're always getting out drills and making things and doing things. So this last piece, um, this is a lovely raccoon vase, which are very precious. And it's been treated on the inside to be waterproof. And this is a fixture called a soegidome. I think that just means straight stick. And I've put a split in it. So we make a lot of fixtures um, so that we don't use, no, we never would be allowed to use Oasis even if we wanted to, which we don't. So I put that in there. <clears throat> And the line for this one is going to be a, a pine. And I've made a split in that too. So what happens is that I interlock those. This is cut at an angle, so it goes against the side. And then this can rest as well. So three points of support. Well, there's another point there. Can you see it all? Or is it falling off the end of the screen? Uh, we can see it. Yeah. People are so. nodding. <laughs> <laughs> so wait. You know, some, you have to do precise angles sometimes. So um, that's that's one of the main fixtures and the crossbar is the other main fixture that we use. And then I have some more kumquats. I just, I can't resist them. I have a little kumquat tree in a container. It's not yet produced anything. And even if it did, it'd be hard to cut it. So I bought these at the flower market yesterday and I 
Wednesday, yeah, Wednesday morning. Um, and they've been dropping off. So um, I think you can make marmalade with this. I've heard of a recipe in the microwave. So it won't be the first time I've eaten my work. <laughs> It's beautiful and you can eat it too. It's beautiful and edible. It's organic. Yeah. I'm just going to put these in. I want these as a little group. They smell so good too. They're sort of bitter. You can eat the whole thing, the, the skin as well. And then what I did here is I had some of the long needle pine and I just took them off and turn them the other way up. So this is the part that attached to the tree. Help me to get it inside here. It's and got a lot of texture, Rachel. It's got a ton of texture and it's so strong. So pine, the symbolism of pine, especially using at New Year, is that it symbolizes strength and sort of courage and resilience. So, we yeah, need it, I love it. We need to express right now and hold strong on. So uh, yeah, new year arrangement with pine. So yeah, that's, that's all I have to show that's you. That's amazing, oh my goodness. Wow, well, I feel like um, I'd love to turn on the, <clears throat> take everybody off mute so people can ask questions. We'll just have to kind of be mindful of not talking over everybody. Karen, can we do that? I just want Rachel to hear her fans tell her what great work she's done. <laughs> so beautiful. Well, and, yeah, and the pine is out there everywhere now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people just commenting and, and sharing their thoughts. Yeah. The, I do have a question about the last little like bottle brush connection or piece that you made. Is that a traditional Sogetsu uh, step or is that something you've kind of inventively uh, created pulling the yeah flipping around the the tips um you know it's hard to know where ideas came from right. um, and and sometimes you I've done a whole lot of work on pine and there's some incredible work with pine in Japan so I'm, I'm sure it's not original but you know when it's the first time I've done it I'm, I like, love excited. it excited yeah Okay. Hey, Maria Luisa, do you want to jump on? I was just going to say the flipping of the needles is fascinating to see that you can use a product upside down or <laughs> in words. Yeah. We did a piece in the De Young a couple of years ago, and we, we had sort of woven the pine into a, a surface. But what was really scary is that when we topped it up with water, it, it brought the water to the end and it started dripping on the floor of the museum. And I was terrified they were going to just take us out. I had oh, to like, like for an hour. It, like yeah. it wicks the water. It wicks the water up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You got busted. When you see it on the other way, it's like it's really a good channel for the water. Yeah. Wow. If, if people are interested in, in learning more, are there um, ways like classes or books or references that you can point them to? I know I've been talking with you about doing your own online teaching. So we'll, we'll let everyone know if that happens. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, look up Sogetsu, S-O-G-E-T-S-U, Sogetsu. And there are teachers all over the country. Um, the Bay Area is particularly blessed because my teacher has taught in community centers uh, and, you know, City College and places that have been, you know, for, for 50, 60 years. A well, long, and long and the, yeah. just the Japanese population in the Bay Area is larger than the rest of the country, probably. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but it truly is an international art. I mean, when I, now I'm thinking next time I go to, um, to Europe, I'd like to go and pop in on my cousins. You know, I, I can go to Belgium and see Belgium in Cabana. So it's like a passport to something that you're interested in with other people all, all over the world, just like all of our flower and garden interests. That's yeah. wonderful. Well, people have been commenting how cool and clever and fascinating and mind blowing uh, this experience is. I love that Misty said she was moved. I feel it is a very spiritual kind of practice in, for some people, I would imagine. Yeah. I think also because most of the time you're doing it for yourself. 
and for your space and in the mood that you're in. And if you're not really in touch with yourself, you will be, right? And I think that happens with all flower work. Um, yeah, because it's beautiful and it's fragile and so are we. It really puts you in touch. But also for me, it really elevates and nourishes my, my core. So it's mm. been a real lifeline, not just this year, but uh, no, in my life. It's mm. been such a strong, it's a practice. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called an art and a discipline, which is interesting because there is this element of taking away and um, simplifying and that is hard to do. There are, there are sort of, you have to be strict with yourself sometimes that you're going to strip away. Mm. I don't need all of this embellishment. Or I don't need all this fluff or what is this trying to say? And to come down to what is, um, what is essential. Stephanie Downs has a question about the pine. And then Cindy Schrock just said, my pine trees are not going to be safe. <laughs> You don't mean that I'm going to come down the street and get your pine trees, Cindy, do you? <laughs> Since we're neighbors. Anyway, Steph, go ahead and jump in. Yeah, thank you, Rachel. I was just wondering, with the longer pine branch, you have some beautiful, sparse moments on the branch. And I was curious, as you were talking about stripping away, did you yourself kind of remove bits from that branch to create that space? Steph, dis disclosure, this isn't actually in the pine family. <laughs> oh. We call it pine. This is, um, it's got this little, it's got this little nut or seed here. Mm. At the market, I know it comes from Australia or New Zealand. At the market, he told me it was in the eucalyptus family, mm. which I don't believe. I think mm. it might be in the grevillea family or something like that. That's what I was going to uh, guess. Yeah. Anybody else want to take a guess? But but it's pine-like, it serves the purpose we need. <laughs> so that's, that's okay, that's okay. I don't have to be strict on that. Stephanie asked about editing away branches or uh, needles and leaves. You do often do that, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, Trim, trimming back. Um, yeah, so when you see a beautiful uh, branch, you, you're trying to see the line within it and remove everything that, so that you highlight it. So it's almost like we nature's got what it needs to grow. It's got plentiful leaves, right? But we can accentuate what was the line within. Mm. So, mm. That's yeah. great. Yeah, that's lovely. <sighs> wow. Well, I like the comments that a few people are adding in the chat, especially uh, our friend Kaifa Anderson Hall, who is a horticultural therapist. She's looking at this very differently. Kaifa, can you just share your comments with? Um, with Rachel, I think she'll really appreciate that. <laughs> oh, um, Rachel, number one, just absolutely beautiful. Um, I should have also said an additional, I'm a horticulture therapist and I work out of DC. So the intersection of flowers and plants and wellness is um, what just centers me and, and what I give uh, to those that I serve. Um, but the simplicity, um, I was just saying, um, it speaks to the power and the mindfulness of the simplicity. Yeah. And um, your comment in terms of stripping away to what's essential, um, I also share that that was probably the main lesson of 2020 yeah. and um, what, what the gift was in the lesson for us. So um, the, the beautiful representation here is just amazing. So, and I just being able to work with more of this material and fewer flowers. Um, it's just so inspiring and exciting. So yeah, that's, that's oh. what I wanted to share. <laughs> Thanks for that. I, I, yeah. I love what you said and I wanted Rachel to hear it. Yeah. Carolyn, before we wrap up, Carolyn has one quick question. Carolyn, do you just want to put on your mic and ask it? Cause I, yeah, totally. I don't want you to have to read it all. Um, Rachel, beautiful work. I love it. Can you talk a little bit about, um, your vessel choices and how you think about like integrating that into the designs, especially knowing that your design, uh, I guess, framework is like almost prescriptive. So like, how, how do you choose the right vessel or are the vessels also prescribed like based on the designs in this framework? Like how does all of that work? I'm so fascinated. Oh. So this, this arrangement, this was prescriptive, this one. Okay. So I, 
I have to use this vessel because it's strong enough. So I have to have branches that are the right size for that. And I've got it in a few different colors. So that depends on the material. Um, other ones, I, you know, I might try various different containers. Um, when I wanted to use that Mizuhiki strings, I tried it with all sorts of containers until I decided on the wall hanging was best. And this one, I had it in a bigger vase yesterday, but it was the vase dominated. So then I switched and this is, this is Raku by an old, old lady. And there was something really strong about having that old and young together. So, you know, everything comes into that choice. And this one is just such a gorgeous circle. Um, and so I could fit the kiwi in it. So sometimes, yeah, I'm in the beginning lessons, I'm told you have to use this vessel and do this design. But the rest of the time, it's totally whatever works the best. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We have one more very important question. And I, I uh, Susan Schultz, do you want to jump in and ask that? Because I think it probably is, everybody is asking the same question about the mechanics. Yeah, it was just to restate um, what the interior structure was. I caught in the first design, you were using the pressure of the sticks started to, to be the framework, but I, I guess I missed what the other two um, interior structures were. On, on this on this one, the interior structure was a, a straight stick that had been split. Oh, okay. And so the right. straight branch had been split and they, they went into each other like that. Okay. This one had a pin frog in it, a Kenzai. Okay. Thank you. Oh, good. And by the way, Susan, we'll share the replay video of this so you can uh, go back and, um, uh, you know, put it on pause if you want and, okay. or, or slow down the speed. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm going to issue a challenge that our group cooked up. And that is that, um, and Rachel, you're going to help us with this. Uh, we'd love anybody today who watched Rachel's demonstrations to take inspiration and try your own uh, arrangement. It won't be officially so get to Ikebana, but it will be inspired by Rachel. If you post it on Instagram, uh, we want you to use the hashtag floral wellness challenge. And then we'll just, we'll do, we'll, re, we'll put them all together and, and share them with everybody somehow. We just, Nisha, should we just do this through like Monday or something? Um, yeah. I mean, honestly, you can probably do it all month long and I can just keep finding them, them. randomly. Yeah. Awesome. Um, great. Hey, uh, before we wrap up, uh, someone just asked me for an update on the slow flowers summit. And, uh, I thank you for that nudge and, um, maybe we'll do something more official at the next, um, zoom meeting or I'll, it'll, I'll, I'll share with everybody in the future, but basically Karen and I have, and Nisha have been working very closely with Filoli trying to figure out what our options are for going it forward with a, with a live conference in June, uh, end of June at Filoli for the Slow Flowers Summit. We are very close to announcing the details about all the options for people who are currently registered. We're hoping to send that out on the 15th, so next, a week from today. And uh, we are going to definitely have an in-person component. Uh, Filoli has completely figured out how to do uh, open air conferences and events that are completely COVID uh, sensitive. Um, but if you're not comfortable for any reason, we're going to come up with a, a option for partial refund while still giving you access to all of the recordings. So um, Summit is going to be 100% outdoors, uh, accommodating for social dis physical distancing and all of the sort of amenities will be taking into consideration like single uh, individually portioned meals and that sort of thing. So we're going to do it. We're just going to uh, make it safe for everybody. So that will be announced next Friday. I also want to mention one more thing. Next Friday on the 15th, I have, um, look for this in your inbox on Monday. We're going to have a free webinar uh, for um, anybody who's interested in being part of the Botanical Couture uh, floral fashions for American Flowers Week, um, just discussing the, how d past designers have come up with concepts, how they're sourcing material, how they've actually built a garment and used the mechanics and, you know, gotten it photographed and that sort of thing. So I have, I believe, eight former 
uh, creators, farmers and florists are going to uh, be part of that. And it's this exact same time next Friday. And it's just, it's, you know, it's free to join. If you're interested, we'll also record it and have it available for everybody. Um, so giveaways, we have um, last time, I just will quickly announce, I think I put it in the email, but um, uh, because uh, Maria Luisa Capriellen is on the call today from Urban Succulents, I wanna thank her for that amazing presentation last month and also the, the custom arrangement you gave us as a giveaway. It went to Colleen Rainey of Diadem Flower Company, beautiful urban succulents planter. Um, Ellen Edler of Edler Acres received the Slow Flowers Writing Journal. And then uh, Jamie Rhoda of Harvest Home Flowers and Jill Stidham, Stidham of Titus Creek Flower Farm, who I think is on the call today, both received the Johnny's um, package, the logo hat and the hand seating tool. So congratulations. So today we're gonna give away, um, or for those who are on the call today, you'll be put into a drawing for another, uh, we're giving away a copy of the Slow Flowers Journal book that I will sign and send to you. And then we have two more of the Johnny Seed packages, the logo hat and the hand seeding tool, and then the special um, giveaway uh, that Rachel is, um, is donating. So um, we'll have, We'll definitely have that uh, announced probably early next week. And Karen has put the replay video of uh, last week's last month's presentation about designing with succulents in the chat box if you missed it. So thank you all so much. Have a great January. Keep your floral wellness focused. And um, I am so grateful for our special guest speaker today, Rachel Johnson. Rachel, this was so inspiring and um we should all take ourselves off mic so we can give her a round of applause. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Rachel, it was fabulous. And I know you have another class to teach, so yeah. <laughs> we're sending you off to yeah. share in the beauty. Thank you so thank much. You. It's been a real honor and a treat. And I'll see you soon. All right. Well, you fed us all with your beauty today. So thanks so much. Take care, everybody. See Bye. you next month. Bye-bye. <laughs>